Hey guys, what I'd like to do in this video is talk about effectively testing the battery life of smartphones. This is going to be a long-ish video, but if you're interested in smartphones, well, hopefully you'll find it interesting. The smartphone that I'm going to be using as an example is this. This is the Realme X50 Pro. So I did the unboxing of this six days ago when I scheduled the video. And shortly after the unboxing, I put in my own SIM card. So for six days, I have been using this phone as my real phone. And that's what I intend to do with all of my phone reviews. I want to use the phone as my phone for a while so that I can understand what I like and what I don't like because it takes a while for you to realize how a phone works. And some of the things that you really didn't like don't normally end up being that bad. And vice versa, some of the great features that you like sometimes aren't as good as you first thought. So that's what I've been doing over the last week. But the day after I unboxed this, a day after the unboxing, I unfortunately got sick. I woke up, I had the sorest head. It felt like someone had punched me in the head and I had a high fever. I had like, I think it was like a temperature of like 38.5 degrees. It was so high, in fact, that I collapsed in the toilet and my girlfriend had to wake me up. So I wasn't feeling good for a few days. It looked, by the looks of it, it looks like I caught the coronavirus. It looks like I caught COVID-19. But I'm all good now. I'm all good. I'm all good now. I'm just a little bit tired, but I am good now. But the reason I'm saying this is that this week I've had even more time to spend with this phone. And I've spent a lot of time messing about with the phone, testing all the settings. And I've looked at a lot of things, but one of the things I've really been examining is battery life. Now, battery life is actually something quite hard to track effectively anyway, because there's so many different factors and so many different things to consider. It's really hard to get a proper, accurate way of testing a phone. And well, that's, from my, from my point of view, that's something which is quite difficult. But even as a consumer, if you look at the reviews of phones or, you know, and a lot of YouTube reviews, you might see that someone might say the iPhone 11 is 10 hours uh, for, for playing videos and someone else will say eight hours and then someone might say 12 hours or, you know, they'll all say slightly different results. And the reason is that there's no standardized test within the Android world or the Apple world for testing phones. They've all got different metrics for testing it. Some might set the brightness to 50%. Some might, you know, close all background apps. Some might do this, some might do that. It really does depend. And even if you set all the settings in the same way, it's still not a real fair test. For example, you could set all phones to 50% brightness, but this phone at 50% might be brighter than this phone at 100%. So there's a lot of things to consider. And I'm not gonna say that the, the end results for a lot of these video uh, reviews and, and written reviews, I'm not gonna say that they end up becoming meaningless, but there's a lot of things to take into account. And I think people do forget that. So if I jump back to this phone, I wanna talk about this phone. So. See this? This is the absolute chunk of a charger that you get with this phone. But the reason that you get this is because this has got 65 watt supercharger and it is ridiculously good. Seriously, this is one of the greatest things of this phone. So I wanna quickly show you that and then talk about the battery capacity. So if you jump over to the overhead camera, you can see it here. Now, if I plug this in, so you can see it's charging there. Now, I've got a few different apps and there's lots of battery testing apps out there that will show you um, the capacity of your battery, what your battery health is and all these different things. There's nothing really there to tell you what the runtime will be. For example, you'll get 10 hours of video playback. You'll get you know 15 hours of browsing. There's nothing really there to effectively show you how to do that. But there are a lot of good apps out there. I tested a lot of them this week, actually. I probably installed about five or six, but the two that I've ended up keeping is Ampere, which I've been using for years, and AccuBattery, which is one that I've kind of tested many times in the past and I found myself always putting it back on. Now, you can see here that the max capacity of the Realme X50 Pro is 4,200 milliamps, which is correct. But look at that, 4,000. 920 milliamps, that's really, really fast. Other phones, I mean, even when it's get fast charging, you're talking about like 2000, 2300, that kind of thing. So this is incredibly fast, 65 watt charging because of this absolute chunk of a charger. Now, that is a useful app, but this one is perhaps better. This is AccuBattery. So, I mean, look at it, I'm up to 48% already. I've only been talking a minute. 
Now, this tells you a lot of inf uh, useful information as well, and a lot of this will help paint the picture as to how good the battery life really is. Now, as far as the health of the battery, I will point out something here which is quite interesting. Ampere reported that this has got a 4,200 milliamp battery, which is correct. Interestingly, AccuBattery, it charges, uh, it tested the capacity of the battery over many different charges. You can see all the different charges there, and it's reporting the battery as 2,076 milliamps. Now, the reason it's doing that is because there's actually two batteries in that, in this phone. That's how they can charge at 65 watts. There's two 2,100 milliamp batteries, and it's how they can get zero to 100% in like 30 minutes. So that's why there's a little bit of disparity there. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is accurate. As far as the charging goes though, it shows you, I mean, 51%. And um, this tells you a lot of useful information about the battery. And all, all of this is really useful to the, anyone really, but especially as uh, someone in my position when you're trying to review a phone and really try to gather your thoughts as to whether the battery in a phone is good. You can see the charge current av average uh, charge speed, the temperature, voltage, battery level. You've got the number of uh, charges, screen time, screen off. Uh, it's got the battery capacity capacity estimate. And you've also got discharging. This is where you really get an idea of what is using up your battery. You can see I was browsing Reddit a lot. I was using WhatsApp a lot. And you can see other things there as well. What's really burning your battery? Now that, that, is very, very useful. But that really doesn't tell you what the runtime is. You know, I can look at that and, and kind of get a picture of what apps are using up my battery, but it doesn't say like, this is 10 hours, and it doesn't say, well, this is eight hours. And I, I can't say, well, the battery life in this one is better than that one. There's so many things to compare. So what I'd like to do at this point is just jump over to some pages I've got to show you to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. Uh, maybe maybe this illustrates my point a little bit better. So this is the official Realme uh, X50 Pro website. You know, it's got all the, the features there. 65 watt super dark charge, 100% charge in 35 minutes, they say. I honestly think it's quicker than that, but I will have to test that myself. Um, on the specifications page, they've got the display and then they've got charging and battery. So they've got the capacity there, 4,200 milliamps. But again, there's, there's nothing here as far as, you know, two days standby time and all that kind of thing. If you look at a lot of reviews out there though, a lot of reviewers just seem to move past this. Now I've been guilty of this as well, where I've just said, well, the phone's got a 4,000 milliamp battery, the battery life is good. But some reviewers just completely just don't talk about it. I mean, this, this is tech radar. I'm not a fan of this website simply because you need to close about five ad subscription options and then the whole website is full of advertisements. But you can see under the section here, this is a, rev a view of the X50 Pro, and under battery life, they talk about the 4,200 milliamp battery, the 65 watt charging, the 18 watt power delivery charging, and zero to 100% in 30 minutes, and well, that's it. In their section about battery life, they don't actually talk about battery life at any point. It's all about the supercharging, which is relevant. It is relevant, but it doesn't tell you how good the battery life, which to me is important because 65 watt charging, it's amazing. I will tell you right now, it is fantastic. This is the fastest charging phone I've ever had and it's fantastic. But if your battery life is always going to be bad, it would be a mute point, of course. Um, here's another one. This is this is one from phonearena.com. Um, I like their website a little bit better. They've got good reviews there. iPhone SE. Now, if you scroll down here, under here, they've got the browsing and scrolling battery test, and they've got a graph where they compare the iPhone SE to other iPhones and to a few Android phones. And they've got the runtime, nine hours, 11 hours. Now, clearly they don't have someone in their office browsing the internet for 11 hours until it's 0%. They will have a software, uh, you know, some sort of software application or a service that allows them to test that. The problem from my end, you know, as a consumer, I guess, um, is that I don't know how they're testing it. I don't know what the variables are. They're just saying, first we start with our browsing test. This is the latest of our tests. They don't really clarify what those tests are and they don't really explain what's going on here as far as you know other settings. And, and that's important because when you're comparing different phones and different operating systems and different things, it, it can be hard to do a fair test. These figures are useful. I'm not saying they're not useful. If they're using the same type of test for all of their phones, 
it can provide useful results as far as which phones have the best battery life. But I always take these kind of figures with a pinch of salt because you will see a lot of conflicting information about what these figures are compared, you know, from different websites, they'll say an iPhone XR might have five hours or six hours or seven hours, depending on the way that they've tested it. So I don't know how they're testing it. They're not explaining how they're doing it, if they're doing it manually, if they're using an app. But this is what you'll see. It's quite common, you know, where they just give you the end result in a nice graph and they don't actually clarify how they've actually did the test. Now, one of the best ones I suspect is from GSM Arena, and this is the Realme X50 Pro. And down at the bottom here, they've got battery life endurance rating 90 hours. Now, this is a figure that I'm tempted to use in the future. And the reason being, if you, if you open up here, it says endurance rating 90 hours, 3G talk time, 22 hours, 27 minutes, web browsing, 13 hours, 40 minutes, and then video playback, 17 hours, 20. And if you click on view all results, you can see how it compares to other phones. So how are they coming to these, you know, to these numbers? Well, they partner with another service. They've got an announcement about it from a few years ago with a company called SmartVisor. Now their service costs, I think the last time I checked, it costs several hundred dollars per month to do this. So it's not something I'm interested in right now, if I'm honest. But um, they've got an application called Visor Bat, And I need to look into this more. I'd like to, I'd love to find an application with this and I'd love to recommend this application to all my viewers. Say, download this app and test out your phone. It says it's got different test scenarios, Gen Z or Gen Z, millennials, Gen X, boomers, professionals, and then day of use. So there's all these different tests as far as, you know, maybe kids will be playing games more, maybe professionals will be using email more, maybe day-to-day -day use, average user, boomers, whatever they call them, maybe they wouldn't be using the phone a lot. So they've got all these different you know, typical usage uh, setups. And they don't really explain exactly how it's working. That's the thing, again, GSA Marina isn't really breaking down how they come to that figure, but they're clearly using this application. And um, my, my guess here is that this is probably one of the most accurate ways of testing a phone fairly across different platforms, different CPUs and different operating systems and all that. I think this is probably the fairest way to do it. So I'd love to find an application like this, but, as I was showing you in the phone there, there's nothing like that in the Android, uh, in the Google Play Store, in the Android Store. So you're kind of blind. Moving forward, I'm kind of in the position where, like, how do I test it for you guys? This is one of my predicaments. How do I effectively test the battery of a, of a smartphone to show you guys what it actually is? And again, it's just not simple to do that. I mean, I think one of the easiest things for me to do would be just to quote the GSM Arena uh, endurance test and just quote it and then link to their table. But obviously I would like to do more than that and be a little bit, you know, a little bit more detailed as to how I came, you know, how reliable those results are. But there's so many different things to consider. Uh, it's not just the capacity. You've got the screen to, to uh, consider. This has got a super AMOLED display. So it's not just the type of screen like LCD or AMOLED, but also the size of the screen. But then you've got the CPU with the flagship CPUs using more battery than mid-range CPUs, generally speaking. And then you've got brightness settings, but even then you've got the applications that you're running in the background. But it's not just that as well. If, if I jump back over to the overhead camera, I'll show you um, my P30. So this is my P30 here, a lot thinner. It's like a little baby. Now, what I would say about this, this is like about 10 months old now, I think this phone or 11 months old. Now, when I use this phone, I went to the battery app and I put on power saving mode. Now, what I'll say about this is this power saving mode, I used it all the time, all the time. I didn't use the ultra power saving mode that switches off basically everything and turns it into a Nokia phone. I used the power saving mode. Now, it did hit performance. It does, using that power mode in this does make certain things, I'm not gonna say choppy, but you can definitely tell it's a little bit slower than it was before but the battery life is so good that I was happy to accept that compromise. Now, this phone, the X50 Pro, if I can get it there, there we go. Um, this phone also has a similar application. You'll, you'll find it in all Android phones, this type of battery saver type thing. Um, and if I can find it, where's the battery? There we go, battery. So there's battery and they've got a power saver mode, power saving mode. Now, this is why I've been looking more into this because in my, in my test this week, like playing around with this phone, it, it does appear that the battery life in this phone does not seem to be as good as this phone. 
And it could be because of the Super AMOLED display, could be because of the larger screen. It could also be because, well, the power saving mode might work in different ways. Now, that's the thing. These are not the same power saving modes. This could be much more aggressive than this one. So it's maybe not fair for me to say that the battery life in this one is not as good as the P30 because I could probably download a battery saving app which is more aggressive than the native battery saving app. Again, it comes down to the fact that you're trying to compare lots of different phones fairly, but what is the fairest way to do that? Because some of these power saving modes will be more aggressive than others. Some will disable things that you don't want to be disabled, but they'll do it to, cons to conserve battery. Others will maybe be more, you know, maybe more weighted towards the performance side rather than saving battery. You know, it, from my point of view, all of these tests that I will hopefully be doing would be to provide some sort of useful, meaning, uh, meaningful figure or meaningful result. But all I can really do is just use the phone and just say, well, the capacity is this. GSM Arena saying, you know, it's got an endurance of this amount of hours, but it, it just changes. It changes between every different phone. It changes what apps you will be using. It changes on, you know, depending. it depends on what brightness you will be setting the phone at. It depends on, so many different things. So what should be apparent in this video is that I do not know the answer to all of this. This is a real, you know, I, th I think it becomes clear that when it comes to effectively testing the battery life of phones, it really does become a it depends type scenario. I think one of the best comparisons that I see online is when someone lines up three or four or five different phones and they just like play YouTube or something and they just count down a timer. I think that is quite a fair way of testing battery life. But I've seen others and they said that, well, I, I browsed the web for five hours and then I you looked at a YouTube video, then I did this and I got this amount of time. I think when it's like, you know, jumping around like that, it's not as fair, it's not as accurate and the results are not as meaningful. So I'm going to keep an eye out for a service such as that or an app, even if it's a paid app, something that I can effectively test uh, phones and, and do it in a, in a good way, a useful way, something that can burn the battery from 100% to 0% and do a meaningful test that I can test results and provide those results to you. Um, I've not found it yet though, so I'm going to keep my eyes out for that. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on battery life uh, and smartphones in general. But if you know of a better way to effectively test battery life, let me know. I just know from my end, I've looked at a lot of different battery test reviews this week and kudos to all the YouTubers that are doing it. You know, they're all doing these really you know different tests where they're running it down and you know displaying a timer and things like that. But there's no standardized way of doing it, which makes comparing phones from different people with different review websites very, very difficult. But thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please do stay tuned for more videos about the X50 Pro. Uh, I will do a video talking about the charging because it is excellent. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll leave you to the next one. Cheers, guys.